Welcome back to this channel with um, exercises for um, professional actuarial exams. I hope you're enjoying the channel. You can always contact me by uh, looking me up at that website that you see at the top there. I use the, the redirect service uh, website smarturl.it and you can find me by going to smarturl.it forward slash Jedi and you can find other things that I do um, there and if you want to support our actuarial students and scholarships for students at Illinois State University um, help ISU Actuary. Here is um, a problem from the last exam MLC in the spring 2017 you are given the following Markov model. Uh, the states are independent living, assisted living, nursing home care, and dead. Obviously, death is an absorbing state. Uh, once you get there, you don't come back, except in certain um, religious circumstances, but that's not on the exam. Um, the states are called 0, 1, 2, and 3, the numbers for them are. Uh, so 0 is independent living, 1 is assisted living, nursing home care is 2, and dead uh, is 3. Note uh, some interesting features of this model. The arrows indicate where you can move, where there are positive probabilities of moving. So from independent living you can move to assisted living or you can die. Assisted living, you cannot come back to independent living in this model, which simplifies things. Um, so you can either go to nursing home care or you can die. And uh, notice that you can come back from nursing care to previous nursing home care to previous uh, states. From nursing home care, you only leave that state by dying. You are given the forces of transition. Uh, from state 0 to state 1, the, st the force of transition is 0.01. From state 0 to state 3, the force of transition is 0.02. From state 1 to state 2, the force of transition is 0.30. From state 1 to state 3 is 0.40. And from state 2 to state 3 is 0.70. Calculate the probability that a person in independent living today will be in assisted living at the end of five years. Okay, so we um, note that a person can arrive in assisted living only from independent living. We already mentioned this, but it's important to note that. That is essential for the calculations of probabilities. So to be in assisted living at time five in years, a person has to remain without any interruption in independent living for some time from time zero and then transition, transition to assisted living and remain in assisted living without any interruption till time five. I no note this thing without interruption because this means that we will use probabilities um, P00 with a, a line above it that means continuously staying in state zero and then one one with a line above it it means probability of starting from state one ending in state one and being in state one continuously between the two times. And we should also note that once a person leaves state zero, there is no way to return to it. And once a person leaves state one, there is no way to return to it. So these two probabilities are the same as the ones without the line above them. Um, and the important thing about these probabilities with the lines above them is that they can be calculated directly, while uh, P00 and P11 in a model where returns are possible are much harder to calculate and require the use of Kolmogorov forward equations. Not the case here. We are dealing with a simpler model. And how do we calculate the probability of remaining in a given state continuously? Well, that's actually the, the standard force of mortality uh, model. Because if you are alive, you remain alive, and then you die from mortality. How do you calculate probability of remaining alive? you just use the force of mortality, right? e to the minus the force at times the number of, of years. That's constant force, of course. If the force is not constant, then you have to take the integral. But the forces are constant here. So everything is simplified for you here. 
So the probability set is, it's a continuous model. We simply take the integral from 0 to 5. We take the integral with a continuous model. And then in there, what we're looking for is that we're looking at the probability uh, that the person remains in state 0 till time t, from time 0 till time t, and then transitions to state 1. So remaining in state 0, that, that's this, for time t, it's this t p0,0 zero zero with, a, with a line above it. And then remember how it works with mortality, force of mortality, that you remain alive and then the force of mortality whacks you. What's the probability of the force of mortality whacking you in a specific moment in time? That is the force times the length of that uh, period of time in which you're supposed to be whacked. And what is that here? Well, it's dt because it's at that moment. Now, you're not whacked here, you just move to state 1, but it's the same idea. You remain in state 0, and then the force whacks you to move to state 1, and the probability of the force doing this to you is mu zero one 1 times dt. And I know this is this simplification with dt, but that's a good way to think about it. So, you remain in state 0 with probability tp0, zero, zero, 0, with a line that's the probability of remaining for time t in state 0. And then mu zero one 1 times dt is the probability that you get whacked and move to state 1 at the moment t. And then, and the force is constant, so that's why it's just mu zero one. 1. It, it, normally it would depend on the time t, but it doesn't. The force is constant. And then, for the remainder of the period, you have to stay in state 1, and that's a period of time from time t till time 5, so the length of that time is 5 minus t, and the probability of remaining is this p11 with a line above it of a period of time 5 minus t. And you may ask, well, or shouldn't I take into account when this period starts? But it doesn't matter because the force is constant. And when the force is constant, probability of surviving uh, over a certain period of time is the same no matter what, when that period of time starts. It's only the length of that time that matters. But when, when that moment in time starts is irrelevant. That's why I disregard the starting times here. I just count how long the period of time is. Okay, we just plug in the constant forces then. So this first probability of remaining in state 0, well, that's a probability of not being whacked by the force uh, by either mu zero one or mu zero three. 3 So that's why we have a sum of the two. And then the remaining in state 1, that's probability of not being whacked out of that state, and that's pr sum of the two forces. And in both cases, the force is multiplied by the length of the period of time. Yes, if the force were not constant, we couldn't do this. Simply, we would have to take the integral not relevant here. It's just e to the minus the force times the length of period of time. That's the probability of surviving from that force trying to whack you. Okay? Now, we plug in all the numbers. And... Mu zero 1 is constant, that force is constant, it's 0.01. Well, it's a constant, we just put it in front of the integral. And otherwise we have e to the minus 0.03t times e to the minus uh, 0.7 times 5 minus t. So we do a little bit of algebra, we combine the like terms, and we end up with 0.01 times e to the minus 3.5 so 0 0.1 divided by e to the 3.5 times the integral from 0 to 5 of e to the 0.67t. Well, that's actually the same as s bar angle 5 with delta equal to 0.67, so you don't have to calculate the integral, and that is a good thing to do. If you're calculating an integral on exam MLC, you're probably doing it some hard way because you need to know what the answers to certain integrals are. So the integral from 0 to 5 of e to the delta t dt, that's s bar angle 5 in this case, with delta as the force of interest. So we just use the formula we know from exam FM. 
and yes, you should know the stuff on exam FM uh, when you take exam MLC. Okay, so we just have 0.01 over e to the 3.5 times e to the mm, 0.67 times 5 minus 1. You know, it's the same as 1 plus um, i to the nth minus 1 over delta. Delta is 0.67 in this. Um, and so that the whole thing becomes, well, 0.01 divided by 0.67 is 1 over 67. So it's 67 times e to the 3.5 at the bottom, and the top we have e to the 0.67 times 5 minus 1, and now you can use a calculator and figure out what this is, and the answer comes out to be about 0.01239.57. That's answer C, and we are done with this very nice problem. Please remember that this is copyrighted material, and past Society of Actuaries examinations are copyrighted by a Society of Actuaries, and are used here with permission.